Um, thanks again for coming. Um, our last reader of the night um, doesn't need an introduction, of course, um, so I will read a poem. Um, um, it's one of my favorite poems uh, from uh, Constantine Cavafy. Uh, it's the Daniel Mendelssohn translation of Aboard the Ship. It certainly resembles him, this small pencil likeness of him, quickly done on the deck of the ship, an enchanting afternoon, the Ionian sea all around us. It resembles him. Still, I remember him as handsomer, to the point of the illness. That's how sensitive he was, and it illumined his expression. Handsomer, he seems to me, now that my soul recalls him out of time. Out of time. All these things, they're very old. The sketch, and the ship, and the afternoon. Which is not to say, of course, that Michael Cunningham is old. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Please welcome Michael Cunningham. <laughs> oh, thank you. Kavafi, no less. Um, okay. is, this, is this okay? Can you yes. hear me? Yep. Yes. Um, I love the poem introductions. I'm, I'm going to insist from now on, whenever I do a reading, that I be introduced with a poem. Um, a bottle of Jack Daniels, you know, peanut m and with the blue ones taken out. Uh, you know, it is just such a thrill to read with three young geniuses. Um, Justin Torres has, by the way, agreed when the time comes to wheel me around the West Valley. And I'll just say, hello, pretty, to everybody we pass. I love your dress, even if they're not wearing a dress. Um, <laughs> That, that won't be long from now. Um, you know, I, some time ago, decided that I would no longer read from published work. Because danger is my business. Uh, it's, just, it's just more interesting and alive for me to read something newer. Uh, this is from a novel called The Snow Queen that's not quite halfway finished do in October. Um, so if anyone has any idea about where it might be headed, <laughs> I'm taking suggestions. Um, it requires no explanation. It's, uh, it's in praise of illegal and dangerous drugs. <clears throat> it's snowing in Tyler and Beth's bedroom. Flecks of snow, tough little ice balls, more BB than flake, more gray than white in the dimness of the room, swirl under the floorboards and the foot of the bed. Tyler awakens from a dream which dissolves instantly, leaving only a sensation of queasy and peevish joy. When he opens it, his eyes, it seems for a moment that the skeins of snow blowing around the room are part of his dream, a manifestation of icy and divine mercy. But it is, in fact, real snow, blowing in through the window he and Beth left open last night. Beth sleeps curled into the circle of Tyler's arm. He gently disengages himself, gets up to close the window. He walks barefoot across his snow-sparkled floor, doing what needs to be done. This is satisfying. He's the sensible one. In Beth, he has finally found someone more romantically impractical than he. Beth, if she woke, would, in all likelihood, ask him to leave the window open. She'd like the idea of their cramped, crowded little bedroom that books pile up, and Beth won't shed her habit of bringing home treasures she finds on the streets. The Sputnik lamp that could, in theory, be rewired. The battered leather suitcase the two spindly, maidenly chairs as a life-sized snow globe. Tyler shuts the window and stands watching the snowflakes hurl themselves against the glass. It's barely six o'clock. 
to white everywhere. The elderly snow piles that have been day after day plowed to the edges of the parking lot next door that had solidified into miniature gray mountains, touched toxically here and there with spangles of soot, are now, for now, alpine, like something out of a Christmas card. Or rather, something out of a Christmas card if you focused tightly, editing out the cocoa-colored blind brick facades or the project buildings in the still slumbering shop lined street where the neon cue in the liquor sign winks and buzzes like a distress flare. Even with the tawdry cityscape, though, there's a gaunt beauty now, right now. A sense of compromised, but still.